again to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 2. And we'll also uh, have a look at um, Ephesians uh, chapter 5. Um, I hope that everybody who wasn't here last Sunday evening had opportunity uh, to listen to or, li- or watch uh, last Sunday evening because um, you'll need to have some understanding of that um, to grasp what we are continuing with this morning. We are continuing with um, <clears throat> the thought, um, the revelation of a servant, what are his servants? And this morning we're dealing with this thought, bone of his bone. Not sure how everybody feared, 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 feared last Sunday morning, last Sunday evening, how you have taken the message to your heart, whether you've accepted the message or whether you have rejected the message or whether you're still in no man's land trying to figure it all out. Uh, It is a hard thing to be told that you must care much, much, much more for the family of God than you care for what you think is your own flesh. Amen? Amen. And for some of you, that'll be most difficult. And, but um, this morning again, God is going to uh, continue to fill your cup with his truth. Why does God want to fill your cup this morning? Because he's concerned about us and wants each one of us to be with him, to be part of his family. God wants you to have a regard for and to love his family. Amen? Because that's all you'll have once you die. And don't you ever forget that. The only ones that will be with you are the ones that truly care for you today, the family of God. Everybody else who you think cares for you, who's not part of the family, will not be there for you. Amen. If you're concerned about eternity this morning, and that's what we're sowing into, we're sowing, each one of us is sowing into eternity. We're, We're not sowing into our physical lives. Be foolish to sow into your physical life. Because your physical life's going to pass away. It's going to mount to Zippo, nothing. It's going back to the dust from which it came, going back to the earth from which it came. We need to be brave this morning, have courage this morning. <clears throat> you know um, that God told Joshua that if he was going to walk in the Word, if he was going to follow God, he would have to have great courage. And you need great courage. A Christian is not a wimp. A Christian is not a weakling this morning. A Christian is a, is a person, a man who has great courage to follow God wheresoever he leads them. Amen? And uh, so uh, this morning God's going to help you even more uh, in this wonderful journey that he has us on. It is a wonderful journey. Amen? It is good to know uh, your end. Amen? With surety. Um, so we're going to what? Genesis chapter 2. We're also going to go to Ephesians chapter 5. And so Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22. It says, well, it's verse verse 21. It'll be good. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, to cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and the wife, and were not ashamed. And then we go over to Ephesians chapter 5. We look at verse 22. And it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Amen. The Baptist people really like this one. Amen. But I remind that you've underlined, as unto the Lord. Amen. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, but remember the, what he said before, unto the Lord. Husbands, uh, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, having not spot or wrinkle or any such thing, 
but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourish and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning the Christ and the church. He told us all what we just read for this one purpose. Amen? That he was speaking concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Amen? But verse 32 is the important verse. What he just told us was to help us understand the great mystery, amen, concerning Christ and the church, amen. In other words, when we marry a husband or we marry a wife, amen, or I suppose in keeping with, with what we just read there, when a man marries a woman, that woman does not become his flesh and his bone, amen. Uh, that's just not the truth, amen? The reality is that each one of us in the flesh or in the physical, we're all bone of the first Adam. Each one of us this morning, we are flesh of the first Adam, amen? Amen? So we are dealing with the reality of the first Eve or the first Adam and the first Eve who were one flesh and one bone, literally, amen? Eve was literally Adam's rib, or God made Eve from Adam's rib. So again, verse 32 says, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, here's the important thing. He says, now look, uh, don't think for a minute that uh, when a uh, you know, wife, you marry a husband, or a husband, when you get a wife, that she is now one flesh with you. That is not the truth, amen. I'm trying to teach you about Christ and the church and using the first man and the first woman to try and show you what's going on. Then he says, nevertheless, all right. Now I've told you this, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular, uh, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Telling us, you know, marriage is not an ordinary thing. Amen. Marriage is a serious matter. And once into, uh, entered into is for life. Amen. So I want you to see, understand there what Ephesians 5 is all about. He's using that to try and teach us the great mystery concerning the relationship between Jesus Christ and the church. Amen? Now, we have already defined Revelations chapter 1 as being the foundation of the revelation of Jesus Christ as a whole. And Revelations 1 and verse 1 being, if you like, the precious cornerstone. Amen? And of course, we've also learnt, I believe, in the last number of weeks, that we are those who are called, according to Peter, living stones. Amen? Um, so the living stain, stones, if you like, are upon the foundation. You lay the stone, amen, uh, or, or the, you know, well, I won't say bricks uh, because that gives a bad connotation, but we are built upon the foundation, amen? Jesus said upon this rock or this stone. He was referring to the precious cornerstone. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, shall not prevail against the church, his wife. Amen. That's what he's uh, telling us there. Amen. It is the cornerstone this morning that gives us this precious cornerstone that gives us both the square and the perpendicular of the building to be built upon that foundation. Amen. Amen. So um, we are therefore part of this building as long as we measure to the cornerstone both in its perpendicular 
and it's a square. Amen? Amen? It, it, you know, the church of God and the people of God in particular are a measured people. Amen? We are a measured people this morning. Revelations 11 uh, and the first uh, verse there tells us Amen. That God gave the angel a rod to measure both the temple and the altar, telling us this morning that we are measured against the altar. We are measured against Christ. And if we don't measure up, we are not part of the building. Amen. If we do not measure up to the cornerstone this morning, we are not part of the building. I do realize that from time to time, amen, a lively stone uh, you know, may, may need a, you know, a, a bit of a working done to it. And the Bible tells us that because God chastises us. God corrects us. Amen. But if you don't measure up, amen, uh, you're not part of, you are removed from the structure. Amen. And praise the Lord for that. Now, it is, it is also our understanding this morning that if we are going to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ, according to Revelations in first, uh, verse 1, Revelation 1 and verse 1, uh, this revelation is given to his servants, given to his servants only. Therefore, it's very important for each one of us to have a revelation of his servants. Amen. What is the point in digging into the book of the Revelation if you do not know with clarity and with absoluteness that you are a servant of God? Amen. Uh, you know, if you are not the servant of God, you are simply going to lead yourself into more and more confusion. Amen. So uh, when the Lord said uh, this message, this revelation is a, a, a message or a revelation to my servants only. He was telling us that it is an exclusive and inclusive message to a very narrow group of people, his servants. Amen. And we must always keep that before us this morning. Amen. You know, one of the great truths and something that we must always understand, amen, that the revelation of Jesus Christ will not make you a servant. You must be a servant to receive the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen? The revelation is not given to get you saved. It is for a saved people. This message, if you like, uh, is, is not necessarily pointed at getting a person born again. It is for those who are born again. Amen? Amen? Because, uh, again, uh, when we study the book of the Revelation, we begin to realize that it is a sealed book. Amen? And we've learned that the Holy Spirit is the one who seals and unseals. You, you were discussing that in your Sunday school this morning. Amen? Why do people not understand the Word? Because it is sealed to them. You need to have the Holy Spirit. Amen? To unseal the book. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible says we must be born again. Amen? The gospel is sufficient. Amen? You must repent. You must turn from your sins. Amen. You must confess those sins and walk in a different way. You must quit your way and begin walking God's way. Upon that and upon that confession, God will give you His Spirit. And when He gives you His Spirit, you begin to see the Word. You begin to understand the Word. It's very simple, really. Amen. Um, praise the Lord for that. Amen. 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 So again, uh, I, I'm going to uh, repeat what I just said. The revelation of Jesus Christ will not make you a servant. The revelation of Jesus Christ is given to his servants. Amen. Therefore, if we are to see the vision, and it's a vision that we must see, that if we are to see the vision that John saw, amen, we need a revelation of his servants. Amen. Because to them alone, and only them, and nobody else, is the revelation of Jesus Christ given. Only to them, that group who are his servants, is it given to know and understand the mysteries of God and his kingdom. To all others, doesn't matter who they are, you may be here this morning, it is a closed book to you. You will never understand it until you become his servant. Amen? Praise the Lord. 
Now many take the last portion there that we read in Ephesians chapter 5 as being a, a picture of an earthly marriage. Amen? And many use it uh, to teach and, and use it in a marriage ceremony and, and uh, so forth. Amen? Amen? Uh, but saints, uh, I do not believe that to be the truth. I believe I've already shown you that we're dealing with two distinct marriages. We're dealing with the marriage of the first Adam and the first Eve and the last Adam and the last Eve. Amen? The first was a earthy or literal marriage. God putting the first man, Adam, into a deep sleep. Amen? And from his side, he took a rib from which he made a woman. Amen? Her name was Eve. Why is she called Eve? Because she's the mother of all living. She's the mother, she's the mother of, 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 of everybody, of every human being after the earth or after the flesh. Amen? It was Eve who was literally bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Amen? And that's pretty easy to understand because God removed a piece of Adam's bone and a piece of Adam's flesh. It's very simple if we'll just follow the simplicity of, of, of what God um, is showing us. Amen? Now, the second one, the marriage of the last Adam, amen, was spiritual and it was heavenly. God putting the last Adam, Jesus Christ, to sleep on the cross, amen, and from his side, God had a Roman soldier do some surgery. Don't tell me God can't do things. Don't, don't tell me that God can't change situations, that, can't, that God can't move in the physical realm and change situations for you. He can and he does. Just ask him to do it. Amen? But God took a Roman soldier, amen, and, uh, and, and got him to use a spear as a scalpel and sliced the side of Jesus and out from his side flowed blood and water, amen? And from that blood and water, God made a woman. Isn't that wonderful? From that blood and from that water, God made a new woman, amen? Christ helped meet the church, amen? Now, sometimes we think of the church as being an entity, and I believe that, that I've received further revelation upon that. The church is not an entity. The church is a living being. God made a... Eve wasn't an entity. She was a living being. The church is alive. The church is a woman this morning. Amen. A living being. And because she was taken out of the side of Jesus Christ, she is bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Amen? Uh, the Bible tells us that the church is the body of Christ. Amen? Flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth shall pass away. So I don't know why we spend so much time chasing the earthy, heaven and earth. That's going to pass away. But my words... What are the words of Christ? Who is Christ? John 1 verse 14 tells us, who is he? He's the Word. He's the Word made flesh. Amen? You see, every word that proceeded from his mouth was alive. It was living. Amen? Even when he was rebuking those Pharisees, and calling them vipers and whatever else he called them. They were living words. They, had, they were the words that could bring change and bring life even to them. And of course, we read in the book of Acts that many of those uh, who received those stinging words, yet living words. See, sometimes we're too afraid to give the stinging words. Amen? We want to make it a lovey-dovey gospel, but sometimes it needs to have a sting to it. Amen? Uh, because those very stinging words that Christ spoke to them, reading the book of Acts, uh, amen, began to live within them. And many of them were born again and became part 
of the church of God. Amen? Amen? So those words that Jesus spoke, they are alive, they are spiritual, and shall not pass away. Amen? Now the church is Christ's. And we, uh, this morning in particular, are members of that church. As Jesus Christ uh, is the Word made flesh, I think the Apostle Paul tells us, or Paul the Apostle tells us, we ought to quit giving him a title, amen, he had a position or a calling as an Apostle, uh, he uh, called us living epistles. We are living epistles, amen, uh, amen, we, 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 that's, well, I think that's wonderful this morning, amen, we have been born again by the Word of God, hallelujah, amen. We have been born again this morning by the Word made flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Every single born again person this morning, God puts into his church. Let's turn to, um, quickly to uh, Acts 2 verse 47. And just read that. Amen. Every saved soul, God puts. That is a revelation in itself. You didn't put yourself in the church. I didn't put myself in the church. God did. Amen? Uh, and you need to, re- need to remember that and be careful about that. Amen? Uh, you know, how, how you have to do with your brothers and sisters. We're very quick to want to examine our brothers and sisters and heap rebuke upon our brothers and sisters, but we forget that we didn't put them in the place and position they're at this morning. God put them in the church, and we, when, uh, when uh, we begin to react against them, we are reacting against God himself. Amen. Uh, we're Acts 2 and verse 47. And some of you are already there. Praising God and having favor with all the people, the Lord added to his church daily such as should be saved. Of course, that is not the true rendering of the original. We always must remember that, why do you think that many of the Baptists like the King James Bible? Have you ever wondered why, why why even many of them believe in double inspiration? That the King James Bible, uh, when the um, translators uh, who were part of the Church of England uh, translated uh, the King James uh, for us, that it had a double inspiration. So it is, it is as inspired as the original. Why do you think uh, that the Church of England loves the King James? Why do, why do Baptists love the King James? Why do Presbyterians and those kind of people love the King James Bible? Because they're Calvinists. Amen. The King James Bible, if you're not careful, will tend to and lead to Calvinism. Amen. We must always see the correct, uh, and I didn't bring uh, my original with me this morning. I'll bring it tonight if I remember so that you can see it for yourself. Amen. The original says this. It literally says, and the Lord added the ones having been saved from day to day to the church. Amen. You see, uh, uh, we this morning believe and understand the Bible to teach the predestination of the church. But the individuals are not. Whereas a Calvinist believes that every single individual is predestined to either be saved or to be lost. They don't believe in whosoever will. And then they believe that God already in his infinite foreknowledge has decided that this morning there are some of you here that no matter how hard you try to get saved, you never can. God has destined you to the lake of fire. My, what a pitiful and disgusting and gospel that is. Amen? In fact, if you believe that gospel, and see, none of them will do it, they should go onto the street corners and begin to rejoice in those who are going to hell. Because they are as much called of God according to them, as those who are called to heaven. Amen. In fact, they should change their gospel message and start seeking out those who are going to hell and rejoice with them that they are the called of God. It is just so utterly foolish 
that it just boggles the mind how, how relatively intelligent people can even believe that. Amen? God is a God of His people. And God wants all of us to be saved. God wants all His offspring. Amen? That came through Adam. Amen? To become the offspring of His dear Son this morning. Amen? That is the wonderful truth and the gospel that the church has been given and must give to this lost and dying world. Amen? But I just want to show you how diabolical, amen, a predestined individual message truly is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, um, where were we? We were lambasting the Baptists again and the Presbyterians. Well, that Babylon. Amen. God's hitting them hard. Amen. So uh, we understand that we have been added to the church when you were born again. On the day that you were born again, day by day, God adds every person who's born again to the church. Amen. Um, and Peter declared that those who are added to the church are lively stones. Amen. We make up the building. We're built upon that precious cornerstone. Upon the rock we are built. Amen. Jesus, I'll build my church. Amen. Upon the rock. Upon that cornerstone. And of course, we are, if you like, in the church. And the church, in many ways, is still being added to, is it not? Every saved person, according to Acts 2 verse 47, is being added to the church. Is making up the building. Amen. And I believe, and I believe the Bible teaches that when the building is complete, it'll be the end. Amen. It will be the end. Amen. We also understand from John chapter 14 that Jesus told us that based upon his word abiding in us, he abides in us. Now remember, it's not those little uh, black and red uh, words you're reading right there that he's talking about. He's talking about the Word made flesh. As long as He, amen, if that living Word abides in you, well, naturally and obviously, He abides in you. Amen? That's how simple it really is. And of course, we also realize from last week, and we'll just say it again, that as long as, if you like, the breath, remember, God breathed into Adam and made him a living soul. As long as that breath remained in Adam, he continued to be a son of God. When the breath departed, he ceased being the son of God. Amen? And so it is with us this morning. As long as the breath of God remains in us, we remain and continue to be the sons and the daughters of God. Amen? I believe last week we understood that the breath is what? Is inspiration. And inspiration is the Spirit. Amen. What does uh, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 say? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. A again, you're going to understand that, that things are not as obvious as they ought to be. And things are not as perfect as it ought to be because the correct rendering again is... All Scripture is given by the Spirit of God. Isn't that the truth? Amen? All Scripture is given by the breath of God. God doesn't breathe physically. The breath is His Spirit. Amen? So all Scripture, all the understanding of Scripture, that which we truly need, the Word living, the Word alive to make us living epistles, Amen. Uh, is given to us by the Spirit of God. Amen. Now the church, the wife of Christ, is bone of His bone. It is the only true eternal family there is. All else is pretense. I'm talking about eternally. Is pretense. Amen. It is fake. Amen. It is, only, it is the only true eternal family both in heaven and on the earth amen why do I know that you see many will teach they believe in the eternal church 
But then they teach about an invisible church upon the earth that you can't see. Amen? So they are trying to make this, 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 this church that they say is on the earth like invisible or, uh, you know, it's really the one up there. You know what I'm kind of saying? It doesn't exist, in other words, upon the earth. It is invisible. But of course, from Hebrews 12, uh, verse, I think it's 22 and 23, it says, But, you are, but ye are come unto Mount Zion. Way back there uh, in uh, AD, uh, 70 or 80, whenever the, the, the uh, book of Hebrews was written, they were already coming to Mount Zion. Living people, people in fleshly bodies, in earth bodies, were coming to Mount Zion. So there and then, Mount Zion was already upon the earth. Amen? Amen. We're dealing again with the revelation of his servants. Let's turn to Revelation 21. The Bible tells us that the church is the body of Christ. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21 and verse 2 that the church came down from God. We read verse 2, and it says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Amen. Again, if you'll reference Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 and 23, and follow that and study that, you'll discover clearly that this New Jerusalem, this holy city, is Zion, the church of God. Amen. So here in, in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 21, we are seeing the church of God, the woman that God made from blood and water coming down out of heaven. God, remember, you'd expect that because God made her. So you'd expect her to be coming down from where God is. So it came down uh, out of heaven from, or from God, or out of God. Let me read it, get it right. <laughs> Amen. Down from God, out of heaven. Amen. It is in her this morning that every child that is born again is born. Amen. Let's read on. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. When did this happen? When did this happen? Anybody have any idea? When you were born again. Do you have a scripture reference for me to prove that? Remember it says there, it says, For the former things are passed away. What does 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 say? Therefore, if any man is in Christ, what? He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold... All things are become new. The old things, the former things are passed away. Amen? Verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. Well, we should read verse 5. And he said upon the throne, saying, behold, I make all things new. We should have read that with the other one, right? And he said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Amen? God made all things new when you were born again. And it's verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done, I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, not the in-between. I will give unto them that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. When did you drink from this fountain? You see, some people to whom the book is sealed have put this way into the future somewhere. But when did you drink 
from the fountain. Isaiah 12 verse 3 tells us, Therefore with joy shall ye drink or draw water out of the wells of salvation. Turn to uh, John chapter 4. Amen. It's good for us to see all these scriptures and to see the book of the Revelation become alive to us that we might understand who the family is. Amen. John chapter 4. You know, in Psalm 36 and verse 9, it says this. It says, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. When did that happen? When you were born again. When you received his spirit. Amen. What a shame it is for those dear folk who try to teach uh, two uh, cleansings to get the spirit. My, how do you ever find the second? If you don't have the light. Amen. I'm glad we have the light and we need not find a second this morning. Amen. John 4 verse 10. And it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, remember the woman at the well, the uh, Samaritan, wasn't it? Woman from Samaria. It says, If thou knewest the gift of God, who it is that saith to thee, it's good to know if thou knewest the gift of God. Well, that's a giveaway in itself. Uh, who, is, uh, who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him, in him, a well of water springing up into everlasting life. We turn over to John chapter 7 to get even a greater understanding of this water that he's going to put in us. Amen? Verse 37. We find in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood up and cried saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Wow. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He had not yet stood in his role, his priestly role as the high priest, to cast the Spirit of himself into living flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 so that we can get John 4 and John 7 together. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, and have all been made to drink into the one Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are we still in Revelations 21? If not, grab a whole heap of pages and turn over in the direction toward the north. Amen. <laughs> this new Jerusalem that we see in Revelations 21 is the church of God. It is the one that God made from the blood and the water that came out of the side of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is this wife that is now bone of his bone. Wow. Look at verse 7 there in Revelation 21. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I'll be his God, and he shall be my God. Oh, I'm sorry, my son. Get that right. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers, the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake at which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You do not want to have that. And there came unto me one of the seven angels with, that had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues and talked to me saying, come up hither, come up here. 
and I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. This is the wife of Christ. This is the bride of Christ. This is the great mystery and revelation of the servants of God. Amen. This is the great mystery, uh, amen, that Paul was trying to reveal to us in uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's keep your finger there again in Revelation 21. Just go, let's refresh ourselves in Ephesians chapter 5. Oops, I don't want Philippians. Ephesians 5 and verse 29. For no man ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body and members of his flesh and members of his bones. Amen. This is the great mystery. Back to Revelation 21. Verse 10, it says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even a jasper stone, clear as... The, my, this is shouting stuff. Hallelujah. Amen. Having the, she bore the glory. Woo! Amen. And her light was like unto a stone most precious. She was like the cornerstone. Woo! Amen. This is good stuff. Amen. Unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. This is the church that God made from blood and from water. This is the church Jesus built or God built in the celestial and brought it down into the terrestrial. Praise God for that. Some 2,000 years ago that each one of us, as we were born again day by day, God could add us to that wonderful wife of Christ. What a wonderful revelation that is. Amen. That has been happening now, taking place for the last 2,000 years. And for 2,000 years, brothers and sisters, false religion has been opposing that. Amen. For 2,000 years, for an equal amount of time that God allowed the church to come down, the wife, false religion has been against her. Amen. We know in Revelation chapter 12, Amen. That when the woman appeared, the dragon opposed her and tried to devour her children. Amen. Who are her children? Well, you and me are her children. Amen. Way there in the morning time when the church appeared, amen, and she began to bear children, the dragon began to oppose her. Amen. Began to try to devour the children. Amen. Paganism, or the dragon represents paganism. Amen. Roman Catholicism is just simply uh, religious paganism. Amen. I was thinking uh, during the week about Babylon and what Babylon is. You see, paganism is not Babylon. And even Roman Catholicism is not Babylon. Remember, Babylon is what? Confusion. Confusion. Amen. You see, uh, what, what is confusion? Confusion began when the daughters came out of paganism. Amen? The Protestants, they're the ones who brought the confusion and have been a confusion ever since. They are truly Babel and Babylon. Amen? But I'm glad this morning that Babylon is falling, falling, falling. Praise God for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, why has false religion been trying to oppose the church? Why? Why, uh, why, did, the, why did the dragon make every effort to, to devour the children? Why, uh, did it, why did the dragon transform itself and put on a religious garb 
but keep the little red shoes. Why, when that wasn't working, uh, did it uh, metamorphosize itself, if you like, uh, into Protestantism? Why? Because they all have the same message, the invisible church. You see, most people in religious circles, if you ask them about the church, they believe in the heavenly church, but when it comes to the church on earth, they say it's invisible. Amen? And that's why we're all part of the church. I mean, over there, we're all part of the church over there. But it's invisible here, amen? But the truth is, the church of God exists in two places. It exists where the body is and where the members are. So it exists in the heaven of God, amen, where our brethren are. And this morning, it exists upon the earth. Because we have brethren upon the earth as well, amen? The body of Christ exists in two places, both in the celestial realm and in the terrestrial realm this morning, amen? Praise the Lord for that, amen? Amen. Now, why do they oppose the message? Why are they trying to devour the children, amen? Because before you can become part of the celestial family, you must become part of the terrestrial family, so if they can dupe you and not become a part of the terrestrial family, you'll not be part of the celestial family. That's what their doctrine and mythology is all about. To prevent people from finding and being part of the church of God upon the earth. Because the only way into the church is what? You must be born again. You must be born into the terrestrial family. You must become bone of Christ's bone here. You can't become his bone over there. Amen? You know, uh, it is a point that a man wants to die and then... The judgment, where the tree falls, there's where it is going to lie. This is why Jesus said in John 14, if we turn there, John 14, I think we're finished in Revelation 21, so you can rest your fingers, your hands. I hope you're enjoying it this morning. Amen. Understanding this church, the church, the wife, the eternal family that exists both in the celestial realm, but praise God, it is here today upon the earth. Don't you tell me you can't be part of the family. John 14, this is why Jesus said this. He said this, and, and we, I think we read it last week. And verse 26. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter, as usual. Verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. We need to underline that. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Why? Because you are not bone of his bone. You love your natural life and your natural flesh and blood above him. That's what he's saying. Amen? Isn't that true? And, and when we talk about him, who else are we talking about? You see, the reason, again, the reason why false religion wants, wants, wants the wife way into the future, amen, detached from Christ now, because then they don't have to do with the church. You see, uh, they can ignore the church and say, well, I love Jesus. Yeah, but do you love the church? Well, the church, uh, you know, the wife is still in the future. You see, I don't have to deal with the church, so I don't have to, deal, uh, I don't have, I don't have to deal with each one of us individually. As long as I love Jesus, everything will work out. No, it won't. No, it won't. Amen? Because we have learnt that when we're talking about, the, about Jesus Christ, we are talking about bone of his bone, the church. Amen? 
You can't love Jesus outside of loving the church. Amen? It's his family. Amen? Turn to Matthew 19. So we understand there, he says, now listen, if you don't hate the natural, includes wives and husbands and children and so forth, you can't be my disciple. Amen? Because you're still part of the wrong bone. And Matthew 19, this is the, the favorite get rich quick one. I think verse 29. Now it says, everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers, mother or mother, or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now false religion have taken this particular scripture and what have they done with it? What have they done with it? Well, they have said this. Now if you're willing, willing to give up, maybe use an example of Abraham with Isaac. Okay. Now, if you're willing to give up you know, your, your, your house and your wife and your husband, your children and your earthly possessions and all that, as long as you're willing to do that, not actually do it, but as long as you're willing to do that, you'll receive a hundredfold of what? Natural blessing, physical blessings. You'll receive a hundred houses, a hundred wives, a hundred children, a hundred, a hundred, a hundred. You'll receive a bounty of wealth and prosperity here upon the earth. Amen? Isn't, isn't that what they say? Amen? So you'll receive an earthly return and everlasting life. Wow, I, I like that one. I'm joining that church. But it's not the church. Amen? Amen? You see, uh, when it comes to our necessities, the true servants of God go where? They go to Matthew chapter 6. That's where they go. And where it says to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and he will add all the necessities that you need for your earthly uh, journey here upon the earth. Amen? No talk of a hundredfold there. Amen? Just the needs that you need to fulfill his call in your life here upon the earth. Amen? Obviously here in, in Matthew 19, we're not talking about an earthly blessing, but a spiritual blessing. I tell you, when you forsake your family for the true family, you have a hundredfold. Amen. Amen? When you forsake your earthly riches for the riches of the kingdom of God, you have received a hundredfold and everlasting life. My, now that is something to shout about. But you know, those people in false religion, especially those in Babylon, they won't shout about that. They'll shout because somebody put gold on their teeth. Why? Because they're still bone of Adam's bone. They've not yet become bone of Christ's bone. So the word is sealed to them. Amen? You see, if you would ask followers of false or carnal religion, and you need to ask yourself this question this morning. Amen? And what is carnal religion? It is earthy religion. It is that which has come out of the earth. Amen? Not out of the, nothing, nothing comes out of the dirt except vegetables and weeds. Uh, amen? We're talking something else. We're talking about out of these earth suits. Amen? Uh, out, of the, out of these earth suits, and you know full well, can come opinions and imaginations. Amen? And of course, that's all false religion is. It's something that has come out of the, the thoughts and opinions and imaginations of men. Amen? It's formed in the minds of men. Now, if you would ask people in false religion, who comes first? What do they answer? If we went down to the local assemblies of God church, all right, these are good people. They're good people. Amen, they're not drunkards. Amen, they're not out there uh, with uh, their neighbor's uh, wife. Amen. Uh, for the most part, they're living, they're living good lives. 
Amen? They don't practice sin you will or they don't teach sin you will, sin you must. You ask them, uh, uh, who comes first? What will they say? God. They'll say, Jesus is first. Amen? That's what they'll say. Now, you say to them, what is next? Your family or the church? Make it even plainer for us. Who comes first? Your unsaved husband or me? Who comes first this morning? Your unsaved daughter or Robin? Who comes first? Your husband or Trevor? See, now we're, now we're touching bone. Who comes first? You see, even when we say, you know, uh, family or church, it's too liberal. Yeah, it's too easy to say, oh, the church comes first or this comes first. No. The question now is who's first? Who's first? Your father or... Who's first? Whose opinion are you to regard? Your father's opinion or Sister Sandra's opinion? Who's first? Who's first? False religion without doubt will stumble about now as some of you are stumbling right now. But it's all about whose bone you are. It's all about whose bone you are. It's all about the family that you're attached to. We're talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ that is given to his servants only. This is cutting a knife through carnality, carnal Christians, if you can call them that. And this is bringing us down to the elect of God who are to receive the revelation of Him or the revelation of His power. Because my Lord, we are going to need some power in these last days. Tonight we're going to continue with this. And you're going to understand even some greater things. We're going to look at the blood and the water. And why God is so specific that he can only give the revelation of Jesus Christ to his servants. What he has to share with us is so powerful. So altering, if you like, that he can only trust it to his servants. Uh, how are we going, by the way? Have we sorted ourselves out? We know Jesus is first. Who's next? Who's next? And you can even sit there and say, oh, yeah, oh, okay, well, he's right. No, no, it's not about who's being right. Uh-uh. Uh-uh, it's not like that. It's about what you live. Who's first? Where's your preference? Where's your preference? Hey, um, I'm not talking physically. Nothing to do with physically. I realize that Adrian's a, well, he's better looking than I am. And that's why you're attracted to him physically. But we're not talking about physical matters. It's a heart thing. Where's your heart drawn to? Where's your soul drawn to? I 
have to think about that one. <laughs> We've got to be careful about what we say. <laughs> because you've been sad enough times. See, we need to bear in mind 1 John 1 verse 20. Spiritual, sister. Keep it spiritual. All right? See, I realize and I understand. You know, look at Tim. But you have to love him with all your heart. I mean, your soul must be drawn to him. I didn't want to use myself. <laughs> and I've got to live with Trevor. It's not about the way we look on the outside. It's not, it's not about... You know, the way your heart skips when you uh, meet somebody in the physical sense. This is a natural drawing because we are bone of his bone. Amen? The, 1 John 1. I think it's 1 John 1. I'm not sure. <clears throat> Oh, it must be uh, the, the, the chapter 3 maybe. It's in 1 John, I know that. That must be verse chapter 4 maybe. It's in there somewhere. Amen. It says, uh, if any man say I love God, and this is what most people in false religion do. I, I make a point again. Look, we can go to numbers of different uh, 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 so-called church meetings today. And they are good people, honest people, law-abiding people. They're not wicked people as, as people presume. They're, they're not busy pumping themselves with drugs. Amen? They're good people. And they say they love God. Amen? But it says, if any man say I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this is the commandment we have from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. Amen. Now to put that into something that we might all understand. You know, in a perfect world, a child loves both its father and its mother equally. That's in a perfect world. But what, what happens when we begin to grow up? We get into you know, our teens and maybe beyond that. What happens in many families? Amen. The children become partial to either the father or the mother. That equality seems to disappear. Amen. That tells you that this world is not perfect. Amen? Now, in the perfect realm, which is called the kingdom of God, it's perfect. Amen? We have Christ in the church, Christ and his body, Christ and his wife, the last Adam and the last Eve, the everlasting father and the, ever, and the everlasting or eternal mother, amen, and their children love them equally. Do you understand that? There is no separation. The children of God love their Father, their eternal Father, and their mother, their eternal mother, equally. Maybe that's what Jesus said, amen, uh, you know, when the disciples were trying to flush the little children or get away from Jesus. Jesus said to them, unless you become like one of them, one of these little ones, 
You can't enter the kingdom because little ones love equally. They are not partial. Amen? And so it is in the kingdom. Amen? Which family this morning is the love of your life? See, a truthful answer to that, a truthful answer reveals to you who his servants are. Amen? A truthful answer this morning, a truthful answer. You can lie to yourself until the cows come home. But a truthful answer this morning will tell you whose bone you are. Amen? Let's finish with Revelation 21. I know it's been long, but long is good. And if you didn't get it all, you can get the message and study and, and get this even deeper into your hearts. This morning I want you to have a revelation of his servants. I want you to be truthful with yourself. Whose bone are you? I've given you several criteria, several ways you can judge who you are this morning. Amen? And to whom you belong. Revelations 21 and verse 10. And he carried, him, carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And a light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. This is the wonderful church that Jesus, that Jesus built. This is the wonderful church that God built. A man that came down from him out of heaven. He used blood and water. Amen? It reveals to us this morning, amen, that not only is uh, the church a spiritual being, but it reveals to us also that that which came out of the side of Jesus Christ represents a spiritual reality. Amen? Look at this here. She bears his glory. I tell you what this morning, you touch her and you touch the glory. You touch the glory, you die. Amen. You have the truth this morning. From this day on, you speak against a brother or sister. You die. You've touched the glory of God. You die. You lose the breath. It's as simple as that. Amen. You touch the glory. Amen. Look at the second point there. Her light like unto a stone most precious. Now we could go back to 1 Peter and read about the lively stones and the precious cornerstone. Amen. Her light like unto a stone most precious. Amen. The light, amen, that, 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 that is revealed through the cornerstone flows out of her. She bears the glory and she bears the light. No wonder a man false religion wants her well out of the way. Pushes her way into the future somewhere. But she's here today and you touch her glory. You die. Amen. As you would expect the offspring of God are as Christ is. Amen? <laughs> Again, her light like unto a stone most precious. Amen? As Christ is, are we. We take after our father. We take after our mother. Amen? Wow. Whew. When you shift the cornerstone, and still call it the church. It's a lie. Amen. Becomes an earthy entity. Amen. False religion that leads to confusion and thus Babylon. Man for 2,000 years has been trying. False religion for 2,000 years has been opposing the wife of Christ. Amen. 
been trying to confuse people concerning Christ's wife. Amen? To build a church. To build that which they call a church after themselves. Amen? You see, what, what does false religion want to do? What does Babylon want to do? The Babylonians, the Protestants. What? Why do they split week after week after week after week? Because they're trying to build, they are trying to build a church that fits you. That's why. Well, you know, I don't like it here because of, I, I'm, I, I don't fit here. Well, of course you don't. The wrong bone. <laughs> Amen? But, but they use it as an excuse to make something that fits better. Amen? So they try and make a group or a family that fits them. But the truth is that you must fit the church. The church doesn't have the problem. You do. Just because you can't love me above your natural flesh, that's not a church problem. That's your problem. Just because you prefer your natural family over this family, that's not our problem, that's your problem. Just because you choose to follow your natural family and doing things at the expense of not being here, that's not our problem, that's your problem. You see, your preference is towards your bone. Because you are one flesh with that bone. So no matter how you try, you can't break that tie. Well, you can. You need to be born again. You see, you need to be tied to another bone, a spiritual bone, where you receive the very living Spirit of God in you. You know what's wonderful about the wonderful living Spirit of God, and I think it's in Romans chapter 5, tells us, amen, that with the Spirit comes His love. Amen. You know, most of us, when we were unsaved, we were unloving, hard, judgmental. The world owes me, and I'm number one. But when you're born again, you receive the love of God. You see people in a different light. You ought to have. Amen. Amen. You've got to fit the church. It can't change. The precious cornerstone has been laid. Amen. You are the build on the foundation or you're not on it. Praise the Lord. Bone of his bone. My. That's his servant. That's his servant. I believe the revelation of Jesus Christ is of such enormous such enormous power, if I can use the word power. That God is so particular and must be so to whom he gives it. They must be utterly trustworthy. 
You know, uh, as we said, I think we said last week, how ever wants to use Romans 6.22. How's it go again, somebody? Who are his servants? Romans, is it Romans 6.22? Being made free from sin and have your fruit unto holiness. Not fruits. You know, we all display many fruits of holiness. Amen? Some more fruits than others. Amen? But this is the fruit of of holiness. What is the fruit of holiness? That we love each other. The love. The family. The bone of his bone. I mean, those are the servants. The ones that live the life of the family. Amen. Praise the Lord this morning. I hope it has been of a great help to you. I hope it's helping you to identify whose bone you truly are. Now don't be too perturbed if you're still Adam's bone because that can be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen? So simple. It makes you wonder why many, more, many, many more people don't do it. You simply have to confess your sins. Turn from your own way. It's called Repentance. Very simple. Ask the Lord to come and to live your life. To take possession of your life. To do it honestly and sincerely with a believing heart. And in that moment, he'll change the bone. You'll be born into the family of God. God will add you to the church. God does it every day, day by day. It is that simple. Amen. Your former desires and passions will pass away. You'll begin to understand why the family of God is a far superior than any earthly family could ever be. You begin to see why the earthly earthly family can never satisfy as God's family does. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we have any questions? Something to add?